Hello and welcome to an introduction to scratch and block coding. Uh, this is the first video in a series of videos where we will be looking at the uh, the very basics of getting a small game working. I, can't, I call it a maze game. It doesn't necessarily have to be a maze, but it allows you to move a character in four dimensions, allows that character to sense boundaries. Um, it has a little few enemies or minions that damage you or uh, cause you to respawn. It has items you pick up for points, and it has sort of a win and loss screen uh, and uh, variables that trigger those, those screens. So, welcome to Scratch. Uh, if you've never used it before, this is the video series for you. I'm going to start with uh, this screen right here. This is just my profile screen. Um, I've been using Scratch for about a year and a half now. I've got a fairly good grasp on the basics. If you click up here in the top right corner, you can see your username, so it's your Scratch username. If you click on that and you click on My Stuff, My Stuff is where uh, all your projects are stored and you create new projects for Scratch. So if I click on My Stuff <clears throat> and see that it will load up a screen of all my current projects that I have done. Usually I delete my projects if I'm not happy with them um, or if I'm doing a demo project. A lot of these are demo projects run for various classes. Um, although Super Chicken in the Deepest Dungeon is kind of a fun little uh, pixel art based game that I built using some of the same principles that uh, you'll be learning in this video series. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on New Project up here on the top uh, to create a brand new Scratch project. Now I'm going to just uh, resize my screen here a little bit in order to uh, show you, make sure everything's available to you for uh, seeing what's going on. There we go. Everything's now in screen. So uh, this is the basic Scratch interface. It's basically di um, divided into various palettes. And each palette uh, is where you do uh, uh, various functions. So let's start with the, uh, the far left-hand side. So you can see here on the far left-hand side, we have three tabs. We have code, costumes, and sounds. Uh, we're not going to really touch sounds in this, uh, in this tutorial, but we will be working with code and costumes. So under code, the code tab, you have all these blocks as well as sort of this rainbow of sort of different uh, categorizations for the types of blocks. So you have motion blocks, which are blue, looks, which are purple, sounds, which are pink, events, which are yellow, control blocks, which are orange, blue sensing blocks, green operators, orange variables, and red custom built blocks. Then we have costumes. If you click on the costumes tabs, that's basically what your sprites look like. So within Scratch and any other sort of digital asset design program, coding program, the actual sort of image that makes up the object is called a sprite. Now you can have animated sprites and you can have static sprites, um, but they're all called sprites. And this is where we manipulate and edit the looks of our sprites. So you can see that we have two costumes here. Uh, if I click back and forth between them, you can see it's like a little basic run or walk cycle. Really basic. Two frame walk cycle is really not enough for a proper walk cycle. Um, but that's what Scratch has. It will not automatically move between these costumes. You must program it in if you want it to look like it's actually walking. So I'm going to click back on code. In order to make code, what you do is you drag blocks into your code palette, which is this large blank canvas here in the middle. Um, so if I wanted to drag some blocks in, I just click and drag, and you'll notice that blocks automatically snap together using these little sort of tabs or teeth uh, and, and sockets here. So if you have them close together, they will move, they'll drop into each other. Block coding is really nice in that it's simple and easy to understand. It also gives you a lot of visual clues about how the blocks should fit together or, or possible ways to fit them together which is uh, really, really useful um, in order to kind of troubleshoot and figure things out. Over here beside, uh, beside your, code, your coding area is your actual game preview. So this is in the top right-hand corner. Um, this is the preview of your game. So this is what it looks like. Here's all your code running, and here's what's happening because of that code. Uh, so everything you put in your game will appear here. You can actually change it to full screen mode. 
if you want to test it out in a full screen mode and see how your game works. Uh, when you click the little green flag here, it usually starts the game. So if you click go, then you can run and test your game. Then you hit stop to pause it. Uh, making sure to hit stop to pause it when you're working on your code is very important. Below that, we have our sprite palette. So this is basically uh, information about our sprites and a library of all the sprites we have in our game. As of right now, we have one sprite, which is named Sprite 1. You can see its name here, and you can see its name up here. Uh, this bar at the top of your sprite palette, whatever sprite is selected in blue, it will give you information about that sprite. So we have the name of the sprite. In this case, his name is Sprite 1. Let's double click there and give him a name. Uh, we're going to we uh, move him back to where he should be. So right, right there. And you kind of see him click in, uh, click in as you get to that center point. Okay. So last thing you need to know is right here on the far right hand side, uh, this is your stage. So this is basically your backdrop. Uh, so whatever sort of image you want in the backdrop. Now, uh, each of these has a little blue button at the bottom of the palette. So in your costumes, you have a little blue button, uh, not in the code, because code just has the blocks, but here in your sprite palette and in your backdrop. If you mouse over them, you get a couple different options. You can just click on it to choose a sprite to add a new one in, or you can search for a sprite, or you can draw your own, so it'll basically create a blank canvas. Uh, you can generate a random sprite, or you can upload a sprite. So PNG images are what generally are uploaded into Scratch. Um, so you can basically create your own custom sprites in another program and upload them here and use them. And that's what I did for my uh, D Darkest Dungeon game, as I created all my own sprites in a pixel art program and then uploaded them into here. Uh, same thing goes for backdrops and costumes. So you can either upload costumes paint your own or just add new costumes in using the choose a costume uh, palette. Okay, and that is an introduction to the basics of uh, the game. We'll do one last thing before this first tutorial ends, which is we will name the game. So I'm going to give it this little title and we're going to call it E underscore R and uh, tutorial.